Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're gonna to be talking about the newest album from Spirit Adrift called Divided by Darkness. So over the past couple months, I've seen more than a few heated debates surrounding the concept of genre, or if and how in the era of streaming and blurring boundaries, whether it even matters. And while I've been a staunch force for arguing that there's at least still some place for it in terms of adequate classifications of certain music just as a descriptor, I'm amicable to the idea of subgenres and blurring lines. But if you wanted to come to me and say that genre was always more of a marketing scheme than clear demarcations of sound, I'd be willing to hear and really believe that argument. And to support it, you only need to look at heavy metal, a genre that's well known for fiercely entrenching its lines and barriers until you take a look at the list of tags tacked onto every Bandcamp release, which are less about defining the sound and more about hitting as many search results as possible. So I'll admit I found it a little bit rich when I checked out Spirit Adrift, the one-man project of singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Nate Garrett, this time paired with drummer Marcus Bryant, and and how in their own marketing on their Bandcamp page, they said they were often pigeonholed as doom metal, and then I saw doom metal in their tags. But you know what, upon reflection, I can see why that connection might have been drawn. While they had their faster passages, you could definitely sketch some loose parallels to how Black Sabbath was touching on their similar sound in the late 70s, or the very earliest progenitors of the genre in the early 80s. And yet, like with Sabbath, I'd argue if you were looking at for that sound proper, you wouldn't go to Spirit of Drift. For me, their sound was always at its best rooted in the hook-driven, more conventionally structured, and melodic heavy metal that showed a very clear lineage to the past but brought in the chunky grimy muscle that characterizes more modern scene and acts like say Baroness or even Mastodon and going back to their first two albums I heard a lot which I found really damn promising as I mentioned those two acts I think they've got the potential to get as big as them so yeah it's been a while since I've given a proper metal review so what do we get from Divided by Darkness well here's the tricky thing about this album I can easily make the argument this is easily Spirit of Drift's best album to date, retaining the heaviness and the crunch while doubling down on the hooks that hit the razor-sharp balance between modern texture and a very clear debt to Sabbath-era heavy metal, and not precisely a tight package, but one that knows exactly how to prioritize its best elements and deliver a lot of striking moments. Now, it's absolutely their least Doom project to date, but if that means they were able to refocus on their greatest strengths as an act that just so happened to be a lot more up my alley that's a major plus no 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 the real tricky question here is whether they did enough to differentiate themselves from their forebears and deliver enough individual standouts to hit true greatness and honestly i think they might have just gotten there and they could have well delivered one of the strongest heavy metal albums that you're probably going to hear this year i know this one caught me by surprise and i'm really happy i found them now if only to get this out of the way now, let's talk about some of those very specific sonic influences. Specifically Trouble, especially in the early 80s, a little bit of Candlemas, and especially Ozzy Osbourne era Black Sabbath. I mean, from a compositional level in terms of chord structure, progressions, and even a couple of solos, it's hard to ignore how deep some of those words can be. Now, a lot of that is tempered by production that is modern and well-balanced. I can see why people won't notice it, and we'll get into this a lot more, but it is something that even the early greats and metal didn't always have, and by some sizzling synth work that serves as more of a progressive accent than a strident contribution to the melody, but if you're one of those people who thinks that Spirits of Drifter are aping their influences a little bit too closely, I wouldn't blame you, especially given frontman and mastermind Nate Garrett's nasal timbre that shows its roots in similar older vocal tones. And while I am complaining, I'll also add that lyrically, Spirits of Drift might not disappoint, but they also don't really rise above that much either. Definitely introspective in casting their cosmic battles as primarily internal, reconnecting with primal instincts but still racked by guilt and old demons that can't quite be vanquished, and that's not even touching on the question whether or not those old primal instincts can be fully trusted to lead them into the light. But by doubling down on abstraction and some pretty conventional metal iconography, nothing in the writing and the lyrics is really going to blow you out of the water. And that does kind of matter when your vocals are a little cleaner and more prominent in the mix and you are embracing more of a conventional structure. And given that we are in this territory, it's hard to avoid the fact that there are remnants of the band's more doom-inspired past that can make a few songs not quite hit with the same 
impact for me, mostly through running a little bit long or not quite ending with the same precision, with the sludgy Born Into Fire being the biggest example, although the groove not quite coalescing on Tortured By Time also falls in the same category. Even with the key shifts and that echoing final notes of that solo making a pretty valiant effort. Hell, I might even put the lead-off single Hear Her in this similar territory as well, especially given how abrupt the ending of that song was. But all that being said, for as much as Spirit of Drift might call back to the past, that influence also leads to its greatest and most important strength, only augmented by the other pieces in place and never really diminished by the minor quibbles I do have. The guitar interplay and the melodic arrangement. Simply on a compositional level, the attention to detail between the rhythm guitar, the lead guitar, and the developed bass lines is stunning, with an eye for crescendos off the arpeggiated chords while not defaulting to overplaying just cause he can. Consider how effectively the bass and the rhythm line hold in lockstep on the opening cut We Will Not Die until they're allowed to diverge for the lead to ride off that fat bass foundation for a genuine climax. Or skip ahead to Living Light, which might also seem to have one of the more stable compositions on the album for the verses and the hook, but then makes a sharp pivot into a slow simmer that allows the soul to ride the synths out and bring in even some choral vocals for a surprisingly bright close with that organ off the liquid bass line. Or take out Angel Abyss, probably my favorite song here, doubles its lead guitar for a huge gleaming opener that still takes the time to build into some Black Sabbath power ballad territory. Yeah, it's probably got some of the most obvious Ozzy Osbourne callbacks, but that ridiculous solo, it puts it over the top in the best way possible. But you know what? I have to give a ton of credit to Sanford Parker's production here as well. The old Doom influence, it contributes to a chunky, roiling low end with some real textured crap crunch, but layered in a way that the title track can venture into some bassy but liquid prog rock territory, and the higher melodic shred of the lead guitar does not get overshadowed or swamped out, but complemented, and in that case, actually have the balls to land on a surprisingly bright major chord for the title track. Now, that also plays a significant role in how you get a more developed lead and bass line across Hear Her that eventually does diverge just enough to dive into those gurgling synth wells and a solid solo. And while well, I'm not normally one to advocate for an album to end with an instrumental, it's a really high-risk, high-reward move to wrap up an album, but the way of return is dynamic enough and it's willing to bring all of its main ideas to bear for a terrific lead solo that's well balanced in the bass, drop into an acoustic accented prog rock passage unlike the rest of the album but seamlessly integrated and then ride the kick drum crescendo into another great lead climax that ends in a dark synth inflected piece but one that's paid off by those quaking final notes. Not what I expected but yeah it hits and it fits. So yeah tie it all together. Look I can see a lot of metal purists being all over this album and rightly so. The guitar and bass work is phenomenal. The production is genuinely excellent exactly what I want to hear in heavy metal and the compositional nuts and bolts are so strong I can see Nate Garrett being able to take Spirit Adrift in any direction. But it's that last point that makes me really excited about this album. Possibly transitional and it shifted more to more accessible hooks and song structures but with fundamental mental so strong he could go in any direction, willing to experiment but tempering it in a rock solid foundation. That's great instincts. In short, this is a sort of heavy metal album that seems destined for a real breakthrough, and Divided by Darkness is the album to get there, netting an 8 out of 10 for me and absolutely a recommendation. And given the parallels that I made opening up this review to some really good bands, yeah, Spirit of Drift, it earns them, and more. So yeah, absolutely check this out. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I'll be honest guys, this band kind of came out of nowhere, at least for me. I was browsing on Bandcamp and then I found them and I'm like, oh my god, this is excellent. So if you want to buy or stream it, link's down there below. And I got the poll up there for y'all to tell me how you feel about this, because I can imagine they might be a little more conventional in certain metal sectors, especially given the critical acclaim they have received. But yeah, you're going to want to hear this stuff. It's really damn good. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And hey, if you want to help, if you actually want to subscribe to Billboard Breakdown when it comes out on the new channel, as I will stress again and again, links over in the new card right over there. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.